time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. Francine's going to slowly move across the northern part of Mississippi today and continue to bring tornadoes, heavy rainfall, and the risk of flash and urban flooding. And that's along with river flooding throughout the south. Closer to home, a cool and dry morning starts today, followed by another warm and dry day. Plenty of sunshine. For the weekend, we're going to see some moisture move into the New Mexico boot hill with slight rain chances there. All other areas are going to continue dry. Temperatures beginning to trend a little lower. Sunday through early Tuesday, tropical moisture will move in, providing more clouds, cooler temperatures, and the return of rain shower and thunderstorm chances for the region. And we look to dry back out through the remainder of the week. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. The Alamogordo Police Department has been alerted to a new email scam making the rounds. Scammers are using online photographs of people's addresses to make their threats seem more real. They then claim that if you don't send them Bitcoin, they're going to release fake incriminating videos of you to your contacts. If you receive any suspicious emails, phone calls, or texts from unknown sources, do not engage or respond. Simply report it to law enforcement. This past Wednesday night, Lincoln County Dispatch received an automated 911 call from OnStar of a possible crash in Carrizozo. Carrizozo police were sent to the area to attempt to locate that crash. A silver Acura was located just off the highway in front of the old Carrizozo Golf Clubhouse. The vehicle appeared to have rolled due to the impact with a culvert. The 29-year-old female driver and the occupant from Capitan were both found ejected outside the vehicle and unresponsive. The Carrizozo officer began giving the female CPR until EMS and Carrizozo fire arrived. The female was later pronounced deceased on scene. The City of Alamogordo Local Hazard Mitigation Plan Open Comment Review Period is now open. Public input is a critical part of the process, and community members, as well as residents, are highly encouraged to participate, provide comments, and ask questions. Public comments and feedback are encouraged and can be submitted online now through September 20th on the City of Alamogordo Facebook page. As a reminder, on Monday, the bridge located west of the intersection of Washington and 10th will be under construction. Please anticipate lane closures, detours, and congestion during this time as work commences on the north and south sides of the bridge. This is going to result in a slower speed limit, down to 25 miles per hour, and that'll be on 10th between Utah and Washington. Paint striping, water blasting, and thermo marking will be performed for multiple areas of Alamogordo beginning on Friday, September 20th through September 27th. The dates and times for the work that is scheduled for each road can be found on the City of Alamogordo Facebook page. Well, today is Friday. Let's get a cat chat from Kitty City NM. This is Christy Lepis for Kathy Denton with Kitty City, and welcome to this week's edition of Cat Chat. This kitten season, there has been no shortage of mamas and their babies. Thankfully, there are many kind-hearted and kitty-loving folks throughout the county to foster these precious mamas and their kittens. Now that lots of kittens have been weaned and adopted, we have a number of former mamas who are now ready for their turn to be adopted. Sweet and gorgeous Mia was mama to five kittens who have all been adopted. Mia is still in her foster home being very well cared for and loved. Mia was born in January 2023. She is a domestic short hair gray tabby and she has been spayed, microchipped, and has all her vaccinations. She's friendly and gentle and would make a wonderful pet. Ellie is another gray tabby mama who is ready to find her forever home. She was only a year old in May, so is still quite young. She had two babies earlier this year. Ellie is a pretty short-haired girl with light and dark gray coloring and black stripes. She was cared for in a loving foster home. We will be scheduling Ellie for her spay soon. Chica is a lovely short-haired calico who is a year and a half old. Chica was mama to three kittens born in April. She had spay surgery in June 2024. She has a rabies vaccination and is microchipped. This formerly shy girl has been making great strides in accepting and trusting humans. In fact, she is now always one of the first cats in her room to greet staff and visitors when they enter. 
What a turnaround she has made. She is definitely enjoying her newfound confidence and loves seeking attention and pets by rubbing herself all over a human's legs. Zoe and Bella are one-year-old sisters who both gave birth in April after being rescued and placed in a safe foster home. They are domestic short-haired gray tabbies. Bella is very affectionate. Zoe is shy but very sweet, and she has the prettiest eyes. She willingly accepts pets and cheek scratches. They are very bonded and must adopt together. Both girls are spayed, microchipped, and rabies vaccinated. And then we have Root Bear, an orange tabby who just gave birth last Saturday to five beautiful babies. Root Bear will be nursing and raising her little ones for the next eight to ten weeks, and the babies will be available for adoption in early November. So let's hear it for all these furry moms. They are some of the sweetest and most darling cats at Kitty City and so deserving of a forever home. Visit Kitty City at 56 Danley Ranch Road to see and adopt sweet kitty cats or check out the website at www.kittycitynm.com to see both cat and kitten profiles and pictures. Tomorrow, September 14th, there will not be an adoption event at White Sands Mall. Please come and join us on Saturday, September 21st and 28th for the adoption event with Kitty City and Alamogordo Animal Control. There's also the continuing adoption special of two cats for the price of one continuing through the end of September. This has been Christy Lepis for Kathy Denton with this week's edition of Cat Chat. Kathy will be back talking to you next week from Kitty City NM. Kitty City and you... No one loves them better. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Local news from local perspectives, from local voices. AlamogordoTownNews.org. Local sports, local events, and local happenings and more. Nonprofit owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. AlamogordoTownNews.org. Heard daily on Crazy KALH Radio 95.1. Direct Creek Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. 41-year-old Bunyan Che is in jail after allegedly trying to kidnap a woman at the Home Depot in Hobbs. Shoppers spotted Che dragging a woman across the parking lot. They ran out to help after hearing the woman screaming. Che ran away, but officers were able to locate and arrest him at a nearby hotel. Che followed the victim around the store and into the parking lot where he exposed himself and grabbed her. Che is facing indecent exposure and felony kidnapping charges. And this is a good reminder to all to keep an eye on your surroundings at all times. Stephen Lemon, who owns Pronzo Restaurant in Santa Fe, was facing charges of aggravated battery and tampering with evidence, but those charges have now been dropped. Lemon was accused of shooting 61-year-old Ronald Price with an airsoft-type gun in August. Price was found digging through a trash can near the restaurant. That's when Lemon shot him with pepper balls. Lemon's charges were dismissed by 1st Judicial District Attorney Mary Carmack Altwies. An investigation is underway after a student was found to have a BB gun at Tierra Antigua Elementary School in Albuquerque this past Wednesday. School principal Shelby Sanchez wrote to parents about the weapon situation. She stated to school families that it was reported a student had a toy gun in their backpack minutes before dismissal. The student was then found to have a BB gun. Albuquerque Public Schools contacted police and the investigation is ongoing. Election integrity was the main topic at a House committee hearing Wednesday in Washington and New Mexico's own Secretary of State Maggie Toulouse Oliver was on hand. She was one of six secretaries of state at that hearing. The other five were from Arizona, Michigan, Ohio, West Virginia, and Florida. The goal of the hearing was to discuss challenges each state faced when it comes to elections. U.S. Representative Brian Steele, Republican from Wisconsin, was the chair of the White House Administration Committee. By ensuring states are properly equipped to administer their elections, more Americans can have confidence in how our elections run and the results. As we approach November 5th, Americans remain concerned about election integrity. During Secretary Toulouse Oliver's statement, 
She spoke about the challenge of false election claims and the attempted discredit of voting systems as an issue. This false information has led to increased threats and harassment to election workers. Uh, Many of the people at this table have personally experienced that. But how about election integrity? Non-citizen voting does not happen in any systemic way in New Mexico or in the nation more broadly. And in fact, a Heritage Foundation study, for instance, reported only 24 instances of non-citizen voting nationwide over a 24-year period between 2003 and 2023. However, voters believe non-citizen voting does occur and this impacts their overall confidence in elections. And of course, if she said it, then it must be true. And we ignore the fact that Texas just purged 6,500 non-citizens from the voter rolls, 2,000 of whom had voting histories. Now, is there a way to make people feel more secure about the election system? Would photo ID increase Americans' confidence in their elections? Yes or no? Mr. Ranking Member, I I don't believe so. You You don't believe that having an individual show their photo ID saying they are who they say they are increases confidence in our elections? Mr. Ranking, or Mr. Chairman, you asked me a, a yes or no question. I don't think that's a magic bullet. Yeah, I got nothing. Maybe ask someone else. Secretary Lowe's, do you think photo ID increases Americans' confidence in our elections? 100%, Mr. Chairman, and it's vastly popular among both Republicans and Democrats. it makes total sense, right? That you should go in and show your photo ID. If you board an airplane, you got to show your photo ID. You want to buy a six-pack of beer, you got to show a photo ID. If you go in to vote, it makes total sense that you should have to show your photo ID just to simply say you are who you say you are. Voters across all demographics support voter ID laws in virtually every poll by around 80 percent. This typically includes over 60 percent of Democrats. Opponents claim these measures disproportionately impact black, native, elderly, and student voters. Because they're less likely to have state IDs. Minority voters are less likely to have the kinds of IDs that have been um, described or required. These type of people don't live in areas with easy access to DMVs or other places where they can get identification. So they don't have IDs? Yes, I have state ID. Everyone that I know has an ID. Why would they think we don't have ID? Why would they say that? Yeah, everybody that I know have ID. Yeah, I don't follow any of this, and I am starting to get a headache. Sports and weather are next. You're listening to Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, it just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. There are 62 matches for New Mexico Volleyball today, including the Zia Classic Tour in Roswell. Games today include Hatch at Eunice, Carrizozo at Cloudcroft, Hondo at Reserve, Mescalero at Alamo Navajo, and the Alamogordo Lady Tigers have got a full day ahead. Alamogordo faces Roswell at 9, Mayfield at 10, Lovington at noon, Artesia at 1, and Los Alamos at 4. (laughs) Go Lady Tigers! Friday night lights shine bright tonight with 45 gains for New Mexico football. This includes Lordsburg at Gateway Christian, Estancia at Socorro, Redoso at Robertson, Chaparral at the Institute, Mesilla Valley Christian at Mescalero. Santa Rosa comes to Tularosa. Go Wildcats. And Piedra Vista at Alamogordo. Go Tigers. Oh, and be sure to wear your best Hawaiian tonight. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies. Winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Mostly clear tonight. Winds gusting up to 17. Sunny tomorrow. Winds gusting as high as 15. Your high today in the Basin, 91. Low tonight of 66, high tomorrow, 91 degrees. In Cloudcroft, sunny skies today, winds gusting up to 23 miles per hour. Mostly clear tonight, winds gusting as high as 17. Mostly sunny tomorrow with a 20% chance of showers, winds gusting as high as 16. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 70. Low tonight of 49, high tomorrow, 69 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, talamogordotownnews.org, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. Also, check out the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts. 
complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. That way you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin. And that concludes this Friday edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Enjoy your weekend.